I was chatting to someone the other day whose reason for being uncomfortable with buying an EV was that they wouldn't be able to do a journey of 250 to 300 miles without charging. That struck me as interesting, so it forms the subject of today's video. It's time to talk range. I worry that some people are making quite big financial decisions about cars without being aware of the latest capabilities of EVs. That is, of course, the purpose of my channel, though, to provide people good information on those subjects. So this person said that they were not comfortable with being unable to do a journey of 250 to 300 miles, except in a Tesla. It stood out to me because I think there are quite a few models now that can do that. So let's investigate together. I'm going to head for the trusty EV database. That's ev-database.org. There's loads of useful information here about electric vehicles. What I've done is list models within a certain price range, sorted by range. Now the range here that's shown on the front page is real world range, according to EV database, and not the WLTP range quoted by the manufacturer. So this stands a good chance of being a range that you can actually achieve. Now the, per the criteria I chose in order to select these cars is slightly imperfect. The pricing categories are not absolutely ideal on EV database. They are not particularly granular. So I've had to list up to £75,000 of purchase price, which is an insane amount to spend on a car. But that's because the person in question would probably consider things just over £50,000, which is uh, the next tier down. So I've included here some models that are not released, but are due very soon. So is it just a Tesla that can do 300 miles? Well, no. It includes the Fisker Ocean, the Volkswagen ID7, the Mercedes EQE, the Peugeot E2008, the BMW i4, the Polestar 4, the Tesla Model 3, the BYD Seal, the Hyundai Ioniq 6, and the Ford Mustang Mark E. So that's 10 models that can do over 300 miles for less than £75,000. But there's probably more than that. If you remember, what they were talking about was a journey of 250 to 300 miles. So let's go include everything that can do 250 miles or more of real world range. Now we add the BMW i5, the Skoda Enyaq Coupe, the Polestar 2, the Volkswagen ID3, the Nissan Aria, the Mercedes EQA, the Audi Q4 e-tron, the Volkswagen ID5, the MG4, the Cupra Tavascan, the Cupra Born, the Audi Q8 e-tron, the Kia EV9, the Skoda Enyaq, Tesla Model Y, Volkswagen ID4, Kia EV6, and the Volvo C40 Recharge. Now there are a couple of things that are missing from that list, which from what I understand would probably do 250 miles easily as well. They are the Kia Soul, the Kia Nero EV, the Hyundai Kona, and the Hyundai Ioniq 5. I think those would all do 250 miles as well, but they fall just below that uh, threshold in the way EV database does its calculation of real world range. So I think those might be worth considering as well. So what does that mean in terms of stats? Well, there are 10 models that offer over 300 miles of range. There are 18 more that do 250 miles to 300 miles. So that's 28 in total so far. And then there are another four that I think are capable, but are missing from the list. So long range is no longer just the stuff of Tesla's. Now there are a couple of things worthy of note on that list. The MG4 is one of the best value cars on the market at the moment, 
and yet even one of the MG4 variants makes it onto the list of cars with more than 250 miles of range. That's pretty great. The Peugeot E2008 is another interesting car. This is the first of many Stellantis cars that will be on a new platform. So in the next couple of years, we can expect to see lots of new Stellantis cars that will do over 300 miles of range. And that will include things like Citroëns, Peugeots, Vauxhalls, uh, Chryslers, uh, maybe even Fiat's, not sure about Fiat yet, but you know, there are gonna be lots of options from Stellantis that are gonna do really fantastic range once they're built upon that new platform instead of the old one that they're using for the other cars available at the moment. Now there is one issue for the person in question that I'm talking about, and that's that they drive an estate and EV estate cars are few and far between on the market at the moment. So far, manufacturers have addressed the SUV market. That's because it's more profitable for them and it's also a market segment which they think they will sell in greater numbers in order to help uh, with the transition costs. However, as sales numbers of EVs continue inc to increase, so will the profitability of other variants, and that will include estate cars and soft tops. Although having said that, the estate car market has been shrinking, nibbled into by the SUV market for some time. So how much range is enough? Well, what we've got to consider is that the longer range a car is, the more expensive it will be to buy, which is, of course, a problem for people. What you've got to try and do is consider your real-world usage patterns, but you've got to do so very carefully. You've got to think about not over the overall journey length, but the legs of a journey that you would sensibly do on a regular basis. You need to try to get into a different mindset and don't think about refueling. Now, I recently created a video called Is Recharging Too Slow? I'll be linking to that video from the end screen of this one, and there's a link in the description as well. You might wanna watch that when you've watched this one in order to try to understand better what I'm about to say. But what you've gotta bear in mind is that in an internal combustion engine car, Stopping for a break and refueling are really two slightly separate things, even if you do them in a very similar location. When you do the stop for your break, you are in a parking space where you can't refuel. So then you need to get in the car and drive it somewhere to refuel it, and you are actively involved in the refueling process throughout, at least in the UK and Europe, where we have to hold our pumps on. I know things are slightly different in the States where I think you can still lock pumps on. Uh, but you can't do that here. In an EV, stopping and uh, recharging are actually one and the same thing. You pull into a parking space, that parking space has a charger, you spend a minute or so charging, plugging the car in and initiating the charge, and then you walk away and you do what else you need to do. If you're going to stop anyway for a break, then recharging is easy to do at the same time. Let's consider a real world example of a trip. A friend of mine recently drove to Glasgow for the weekend in their petrol car. The trip up to Glasgow from where they are just north of London was about 400 miles. It took them eight hours to do the journey and they did two stops. What would that look like in an EV? Well, what I've done is I've chosen an electric car which is quite similar to the car they already have. This is not the fastest charging car and it's not the car with the biggest amount of range, but it just seemed a good fit um, in terms of uh, copy and paste of what they've already got. So the car is a Cooper Born with a 77 kilowatt hour pack. And the EV database says that's got a range of 280 miles real world range. If we use a website called a better route planner, which is a planning website that we can use to map and understand an EV journey and perhaps work out where to stop. A better route planner says that that Cooper Bourne could do this journey from just north of London to Glasgow with one stop of 41 minutes. There are plenty of cars that would do it faster than that, but the Cooper Bourne is average in its charging speed to say, uh, to say the least. 
Now, of course, two stops would be fine on that journey as well. And you would probably stop for just over half the amount of time uh, for each of those stops. So maybe 25 minutes each for two stops. Now, is that longer than you would stop anyway on a journey of that length? Remember, you're traveling for eight hours, including the stops. That's quite a long time. You're probably going to want to eat. You're certainly going to need a comfort break or two in that and maybe a drink. Now, I didn't ask how long their stops were, but it wouldn't surprise me that they were certainly getting on for 20 minutes each, if not more. What is most difficult for us EV drivers to explain to people who haven't experienced them is that switching to an EV is more than anything else a shift in mindset. It's about understanding what you really do rather than what you think you do. What you've got to try and do is rather than think about charging and stopping for brakes as two separate things, you instead switch to thinking about them together. Unlike refueling, there is no need to hold a charge handle in the car. You plug it in and you walk away. That's why my recommendation is for everyone to try and give one a try. You need to try an EV, including a charging stop, in order to start to understand it. And even then, ideally, you would do it a couple of times because it's a change in mindset that you just have to get used to. Now, I've done a video on that called uh, EVs, time to get, try one for yourself, which you might want to look at after this video. That gives you ideas of how you might try an EV without having to buy one and spend a lot of money. So in summary, according to the EV database, there are 10 models that can do over 300 miles of real world range. Some of those cars are expensive, but not all of them. There are another 18 models that are capable of 250 real world miles of range or more. Remember that 300 miles of driving at 70 miles an hour average speed is over four and a half hours of driving now, the way average speed works, you probably don't do the average speed on a journey that you think you do. And therefore, 300 miles of range is probably well over four and a half hours of driving, perhaps five, five and a half, maybe even six hours. Are you really going to drive for that length of time without stopping at all? You do need to consider carefully your usage pattern, but very carefully think through what you actually do rather than what you think you might do. In most EVs, you also ought to remember that a short recharge can get you quite a long way. So even just a comfort break of a few minutes gets you quite a lot of miles back in the tank. Well, that's it for another video. Thanks very much for joining me. Your comments and questions are most welcome in the section below. If you've liked the video, then it helps me if you click the thumbs up button. That tells YouTube that it's enjoyable and it might promote it to other people who will also enjoy it. And of course, click subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks.